Hey, hello Fort Wainwright, Colonel Nate Surrey here, Garrison Commander, uh, here to talk to you about summer activities and safety. Um, this is about our fifth or sixth installment of Arctic Vibe, and I think you'll really enjoy this one because we're going to focus on all the things you want to do this summer. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is backcountry trips, and that can be in the form of for hunting and fishing or just getting out and enjoying the great outdoors. Um, as many of you may know, who are from the lower 48 or, or may not know, have just heard, this Alaska is gorgeous. It's the majestic, most majestic state in the Union, in my personal opinion. I've been all over this state via air and ground. Um, the difference, though, is I would argue it's one of the more dangerous states if you don't prepare for your outdoor activities. And I'm going to give you a couple tips on this. Uh, the first one is you must have a plan, a very detailed plan to understand how to get from A to B and back to A. Sounds simple, however, when emergencies happen or contingencies happen that, because it's just life, you have already thought through that. So one of them is communications. As soon as you leave the city of Fairbanks, and even in some cases in around Fairbanks, self-coverage is very unreliable, if not existent at all. So I would highly recommend that you look into possible services um, that you can get texting through satellite that you can communicate back and forth with family and friends in case something does happen or you're just checking in to say you're okay. Um, because if something does happen, you're really gonna wish you had that. Another thing is equipment. First aid kits, plenty of water, um, tow straps if you're on ATVs, things of that nature. Um, because when they continue, gas, extra gas if you're on a motorized vehicle, a boat or anything like that. Um, I've, I've done several trips in my time in Alaska and I've always had the equipment and I've always felt much safer and fortunately never had an issue. Another thing is when you have a plan, make sure that plan is given off to somebody that's remaining behind. So for example, I'm gonna go from A to B, I'm gonna take the ferry trail and go 40 miles and camp. I will be back by Sunday at 1800. If I do not contact you by 2000, that's probably a good chance that you need to start calling the authorities because something has happened. Goes back to my original point about communication. If you have comms via the satellite, then you'll be able to communicate if there's a delay for some reason. But based off my own experience here as a lieutenant and seeing several of my peers actually run into problems where they broke down their snowmobile, got stranded because their plane uh, was sunk in the mud, they had comms or they had a time frame where if we didn't hear from them, we were going out looking for them and it saved their lives. So all very good tips uh, about backcountry safety. Coupled with that is water safety. No difference up here than anywhere else in the lower 48. If you're going to be in and around water, you have to respect its power. If it's a moving river or creek, it may be shallow, but the power of that water and that current is enough to sweep you up and, and cause you to drown, especially in some of these he heavy sediment rivers like down south where the Copper River Valley is. If you're gonna go dip nading for salmon, for example, over the next couple months, which a lot of people, the safety being belayed into the side uh, or tied off on your boat, things of that nature are very, very important. Always have a life jacket on, regardless of your swim level, if you're doing boating activities, or jet skiing activities because again, you never know if you're gonna hit your head on something and you're, and you're semi-conscious and that life vest will, will save your life. Um, children playing around water, never lose sight of them. Always have pause control of them in the event that they get themselves in trouble uh, with the water. Okay, then, and then the final topic is fire safety. This state burns generally uh, more land acreage wise in the lower 48 combined over its history, which is pretty significant. Um, and why is that? It's very, very dry here, um, very little humidity. And so as we, right now, as we speak, we just entered the month of June and many of our training areas are already at the high level for fire risk. And it's so simple to start a fire and you could do it and, and, and it completely be on accident. For example, you've thought of everything with a campfire and a hot coal gets up in the wind and drifts and lands, and that's all it takes to spark a massive fire that will take off, especially in high winds, uh, and, and before you know it, it's out of control. So I would, I, I, I pull you to understand the risks of, of fire safety, whether you're just smoking a cigarette or whatever, 
be very, very cognizant. Most of the fires up here in Alaska are actually caused by lightning strikes, if you can believe that. I didn't believe it till the first time I was here, but we do have a lot of lightning, and that's where they most come, but, but others are man-made, and we want to try to prevent that. If you're going to, uh, you know, have a campfire or, I, I guess, more, more like a burn pit fire or a home-at-your-house fire outside, you must have a burn permit from our fire department. That is garrison policy for the obvious reasons we just talked about. They will come out and inspect it and make sure that you've taken all the precautions. You get the fire extinguisher. You potentially have a cap over the fire to prevent those hot coals from flying through the air or em embers, I say, all of those things. And then they will sign off on your permit and allow you to operate. Um, and that number is 353-9164, the fire prevention office. So please take advantage of that and, and do that if you plan on doing any open fires on post. So we're going to transition now and we're going to move into our first guest, which is Matt Schaefer, uh, head of our engineering division at uh, Department of Public Works. And we're going to talk about a, a, some construction projects that are happening in and around uh, Fairbanks, which I know is near and dear to everybody's heart because of delays and impediments to travel. So, Matt, how are you doing? Good, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so the first question I'm gonna ask you real quick is, let's talk about road construction in and around Fairbanks, and, and then we're gonna provide information, saturate the information space on the Garrison app, on Facebook posts, via North Haven texts, uh, and then of course this, so that you, and you always know what is going on and when so you can plan appropriately for your new travel routes and or delays that occur. So Matt, let's hit the first part here. What's happening like right now, one June? Yes, sir. So let's talk about the front gate. That's the big one. Um, as people who have come through the front gate as of today, uh, the Steez northbound is shut down between our intersection and uh, college. And so the, the contractors out there um, utilizing all their resources to try to get that back and open as, as soon as possible. Um, DOT is telling us that throughout the month of June, we should expect the STEES to be closed. Okay. And uh, within our intersection, all of the other routes uh, will remain open until July 8th. Now, simultaneous to that, um, what's happening on Wainwright in June? Yes, sir. So the, uh, the, the River Road Bridge had a warranty failure for the membrane beneath the bridge deck in the, uh, in the pavement. So instead of having an emergency repair later on down the road, uh, we're working with the Corps of Engineers to have a short window of time between the 17th and the 27th of June where we're going to deliberately repair uh, that bridge deck. And that's going to require us to shut the bridge down during that period of time um, so that we could repave the bridge. And I know uh, the public is like, why are we doing that? Well, the reason that we're shutting it down in June is, we'll get to in a minute, is because of what's happening in July and August. And so even though that is very frustrating for a 10-day period, for people that live in like Siku Basin or anybody that's traveling from North Fairbanks that chooses to take Trainer Gate, you'll just have to take River Road all the way around the north side and come across the bridge by the golf course. It's a little bit longer, about five to eight minutes of travel. I understand that, um, but it is what it is because we've got to get these uh, repairs done at, at River Road. And again, we'll explain in a minute why we didn't shut it down uh, later in July and August. So thanks, Matt, for that. Um, so now let's transition. So let's, for July weekend, the Steese is now open uh, bridge, but it'll be, from what I understand, it's gonna be one lane north and south for most of the construction season, I think, still. But at least you can travel on Steez. River's completely open, River Bridge on post, uh, all lanes. So that won't be congested at all. Yes, sir. However, we get into the next project. Right, the, the contractor's gonna transition into the intersection. And, uh, and that uh, new GARS intersection is gonna require some re reconfiguration of the uh, inbound and outbound lanes. Uh, so we're working with DOT and the contractor to always have um, ingress and egress from July uh, 8th through uh, July 29th. Uh, for a short period of time from July 29th to uh, 8 August, we're going to close the front gate so that the contractor can surge and try to get as much work done as possible within the intersection. Okay. And that'll allow us to uh, hopefully shorten the overall duration of the project. 
So we had a meeting yesterday, and just so the team knows, it was, a, it was a brainstorming with everyone on the post. We had DES, we had the Department of Public Works for our post, we had DOT, um, I actually talked with other folks out in, in Fairbanks and in, in the mayor's office, uh, PAO and everyone else. What we decided to do uh, that was the best option for both the community outside, the construction to be successful in the community inside is to facilitate uh, that, that because the intersection outside of Main Gate, which is called, it's called GARS, Gaffney Airport Richardson Stees Intersection. So that's what that acronym is. It's two, over two years. This first year, there is going to be minimal main gate closings, but I'll get to that in a minute. And then next year, potentially, the main gate will be shut down again for the full summer. That's not 100% yet, but that's what we're, we're, we're realizing. Um, if that does happen next year, we will have another gate, Lozelle, open, uh, but that's to be determined as we discuss throughout the next year. But this year, the key is to understand this. The main gate's going to be much more con congested. And from, you said, the 29th of June through uh, 8 August, the main gate will be shut down completely. Now, what that really means is those five work days. Trainer will be 24 hours a day starting 8 July until, the, you know, until construction stops uh, for the first phase. Badger, it sometimes will be 24 hours a day, and I'll explain that in a minute. Every single weekend from July 8th until the end of the construction season, that's 2100 on Friday through Monday at 0530, main gate will be closed. Yes, sir. In addition to that, there's that one week period where we'll be closed those five work days. In order to best facilitate traffic everywhere else, when the main gate is closed in any of those times, Badger and Trainer would go to 24 hours. Yes, sir. When the main gate is opened, they're in the work week, um, except for that one week we talked about, then Badger will only be uh, open until 2000 at night, if I remember right. We're going to publish that so it's easy to see on a slide. We're also going to open up Richardson during the work week in the morning PT hours and in the evening exit hours for, for exiting traffic only. So in theory, you'd be able to get out Main Gate in some cases, Trainer, Badger, and Richardson, all to help everyone uh, get off base. And so the key I tell to the community here is listen to what we're saying, what the published plan is, and plan accordingly. You can look at the Garrison app, which will constantly be updating. It has the gate hours, so it's very easy to understand. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Is there any other construction in terms of road traffic that, that we know of? Uh, we will have a closure on Alder uh, a little bit later this month and then uh, 10th Street and 9th Street, but we're coordinating um, with the PAO team to send out a advance notice to the residents that are impacted and the various um, stakeholders that are impacted by this project. They're part of the normal uh, process of repaving and repairing, yes, sir. which we do every year with a certain percentage of our roads on base. And that's just normal upkeep. Uh, is it inconvenience? I understand, but it, it's a must. If you're not, the roads will, will deteriorate to the point where it's not safe. So thanks for that, Matt. Um, again, we'll put all this on slides for you multiple times, posted for this, uh, you know, shortly after this or during this uh, Arctic Vibe, and then multiple times throughout the summer. So you can either see it on the Garrison app, you can see it on Facebook posts, uh, and you can see it through, you know, this uh, show. We'll update again at the end of June for our next Arctic Vibe. Again, I know it's very frustrating. Uh, that's why we're trying to get the information out to you all so you can plan accordingly. What about, uh, do we have any other construction projects be, uh, besides uh, roads? Yes, sir. We we're going to introduce a couple of uh, our barracks projects and kind of the status of where those are at. Okay. Um, so we have an ongoing renovation at uh, building 3448. That uh, facility will be returned to the inventory in August, uh, back to the, to the units to occupy. Um, the large project at 1001 um, on North Post will be returned uh, spring of next year. And then we're also working a Milcon barracks with our partners at uh, the Corps of Engineers that'll be advertised uh, this summer and hopefully awarded in fourth quarter. And that will kick off the design phase of that project and will break ground the following construction season. And that's generally a two year completion. So, uh, so roughly summer of 25 is when that, uh, you know, give or take approximately 300 
uh, bed spaces, new barracks would open up. And that's a first of many to come uh, for Fort Wainwright. So outstanding. We wanted to give a little bit of update on the gyms. So the uh, pre-construction uh, walkthrough on the PFC was today. So we'll, we'll start that this summer. Um, the main effort for this summer is the ice rink. And so we're working to get that um, cooling slab replaced by the time our um, ice skating season kicks off uh, this next winter. And then there will be ongoing repairs to uh, the basketball court, the latrines, and then general finishes. And so it, there will be expect some disruption um, as we complete that project. Um, so that's all good news. And like you said, a better, uh, you know, ice system, mm -hmm. better lack of terms for somebody who doesn't play hockey for the, the, hockey, the uh, ice rink. So that's great news. Yes, sir. What do you know about Malavin? Yeah, so Malavin, uh, the beam failure in the roof has closed down the functional fitness area. And uh, we're working with um, USACE again to uh, repair that beam. They've developed a, uh, a design to put additional columns and, and support the roof uh, via those new columns. Uh, last week, we had a walkthrough with the contractor to start talking about the technical approach. And we hope to award that sometime this month so that we can get steel ordered with the uh, intent to get it opened up for this next winter. Yeah, because there's going to be a two-phase re repair, right? Correct. Yeah, so we're going to do the interior phase, which, which will uh, fix the gravity load issue with the snow load that we experienced mm -hmm. this last winter. And then the next construction season, there will be a follow-on phase where we uh, retrofit uh, for seismic loads. Uh, the first closure is probably about three months, give or take, three to four months, and then it'll open again. Uh, to include the multifunctional room. Is that a true statement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it'll close again for the second phase, uh, which is another three to four months. So I don't want to put dates out there because we're still in the design phase of this, but I know the team has briefed me on this and they work to not uh, close it continuously. And the goal is to try to have it open for several of the winter months in between those two phases. That's what we're shooting for. So more to follow on that. Um, in terms of the timing, the only the main thing that that would delay any of that and push all those closures to the uh, out you know several months is the materials that the engineers are trying to get up here. That steel he was talking about um, again supply chain, um, it, you know not much we can do there, but we sure are going to try. Absolutely. Okay, Matt. Is there anything else? Did nope, I miss? that's all I had, sir. Yep. We talked road construction, we talked barracks, and we talked uh, the gyms. Um, again, we'll, we will create a, an easy to read uh, slide and then make sure that it's published on the Garrison app for the different times for all this so you can easily get the information. That's our goal here is to be as transparent as possible so you can plan accordingly. Um, hey, one last note that I, I know um, it's not really in your Will's house, Matt, but behind the BLM barracks, there is a project going on back there uh, from MWR that they're building a huge series of play areas back there for kids, but also outdoor little workout areas mm -hmm. uh, that you might see in other parks. That's all happening this summer too. Uh, you know, it's near Engineer Park, uh, which is where we have the, uh, the outdoor track. Yep. It's all back behind there where there's all the ball fields and stuff. So just for the public to know that that'll be open by the, you know, probably in August sometime. So just keep your eye out for that. Matt, thanks for joining us. Yeah, this guy is busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Um, never stops working and the massive amount of construction that happens on this base uh, that's about triple the normal because of all the quality of life efforts that are coming here thanks to our, our wonderful um, higher headquarters all the way up to the Army and, 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 and our elected officials who are appropriating the funds for Alaska so great job Matt appreciate all the work your team's doing thanks sir thank you so much all right team we're back and I have a wonderful guest from our Fairbanks community uh, Jerry Evans, who's the, he is the public uh, relations specialist for Explore Fairbanks, which is a nonprofit organization. Our whole job, and he'll explain it in a minute, is how to get us outside, enjoy what I say, and I truly believe this, the most majestic state in the union. So Jerry, welcome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me here. Absolutely. I'm, I'm actually excited because I, I want to learn some more because every time you turn the corner, you find out about something new going on in this right. area. So the first question is, what advice do you have for someone new to Fairbanks, which is 
over half of our population is, you know, or at least a third of it, so it's their fourth summer. Who wants to take advantage of everything Alaska has to offer? I, I think the first thing you need to do, and you know this very well, is to, first of all, get out of the barracks or your housing, turn off the TV, and get outside. Um, first step is to do that, because once you're there, then you're on this wonderful base, which it's obvious that you're putting a lot of things into place where people can enjoy themselves on the base. They don't necessarily have to leave, but this is Alaska, so you're going to want to leave. The, the, the main thing is to have uh, a sense of adventure, maybe be willing to get out of your comfort zone a little. Um, most people don't realize how military friendly Alaska is. As a matter of fact, there's more um, retired veterans in Alaska than any other state in the Union. So we're very military friendly. It's not like you're going to come off base and be shunned. It's just the opposite. We, we appreciate you guys being here. We appreciate what you do and we would love to show our state off to you. It's like 14% uh, yeah. right here in the Fairbanks community right. are veterans. And when you add spouses and, and, and um, dependents to that right. or military families, it like triples. Which, which is like a warning because a lot of people come up here and they fall in love with Alaska yes, they and they either never leave or they go and then they come back. Well, that's everybody in this room right now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, right, yeah. it, it's, it's hard to leave once you get here. Yeah. Um, okay, so there, are there any unique Alaska events coming up soon that people should uh, put on their calendars? Um, there are a ton, um, there's a, and there's a ton of things going on, especially in the summertime here, because we have all this built up energy from yep. the wintertime being indoors, it would just explode in the summertime. Of course, there's a couple good ways to find out what's going on every weekend. Uh, one of them, uh, Explore Fairbanks, our website. Uh, we have an events calendar there. People can find out what's going on. Of course, the Alaska Post is a great way to find out as well. And every Thursday in the Fairbanks Daily News Miner, they have events for theater, plays, um, that type of stuff, more of the arts. But there are a couple that you shouldn't miss throughout the course of the summer and some you can't help but not miss. And one of them is Summer Solstice coming up, which is June 21st, the longest day of the year, uh, right in the middle of 70 days of daylight. So right around the 21st is when we have all of our Midnight Sun Street Fairs, where we have our 10K uh, Midnight Sun Fun Run, which starts at 10 o'clock at night. And of course, you mentioned that you're a fan of the um, Fairbanks or Alaska Gold Panners. And of course, their Midnight Sun game is very historic. It's been taking place every year for over the last 104 years, and that includes the COVID year. So what makes this baseball game so unique is every year on June 21st, Solstice Night, I believe it's a Tuesday this year, they start the game at 10 o'clock at night, and they play till it's over, usually runs into about one o'clock in the morning. What wow. really makes it unique is that there's no artificial lighting. They never turn on any lights. So the only lights that people have on when they got a fastball coming at them at 90 miles an hour is the sunlight itself. That's incredible. Yeah, it is. Wow. Uh, uh, well, I, I'm going now. Yes. I, you, I, I you, did not know that history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, and of, and of course, with wow. the Gold Panners, uh, so many Hall of Famers and people you would know have played in that Midnight Sun game. Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, That's Tom right. Seavers, um, Dave Winfield. Wow. Uh, there's just a ton of Hall of Famers that have, have been up here to play in that game. The Midnight Sun Run, you're probably going to talk yes, about next. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the Midnight Sun Run is, is a, such a unique event. Again, it, run, it starts at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, you don't have to wear costumes, but a lot of people right. do. And, and, and another thing about when we're talking about wanting to um, get off base and do some summer type stuff, that's one of those kind of things where you can do with a group of friends and with friends, but you also can get out there with people you've never met that's before right. that have the same kind of uh, vibe that you do, have the same kind of ambition, want to do the same type of thing. So it's a good way to um, not only stay and hang with your friends here, but also meet some new friends uh, out in town. Outstanding. What are some of the essential things people should have or do to make their stay here more enjoyable? Um, we already talked about the sense of adventure, um, but a few basic things that people might not think about, and you covered all the safety issues, but when you're living up here in the winter time, um, you definitely want to have the right clothing. And that doesn't mean you have to spend a lot on clothing, you just have to have the right stuff. You want to make sure you have some nice wool socks and a lot of layers because you can always add and take off layers as needed and also invest in a good hat because you lose most of your heat through your head and trust me if your feet get cold your whole body's going to be cold so 
People get scared or uh, don't want to go out in 30 or 40 below, but if you're dressed warm, there's a ton of activities you can do going out and enjoying yourself. Uh, as you know, snow machining, four-wheeling, uh, cross-country skiing, again, getting out of your comfort zone, even if it's something you've never done before. No, I agree. For the summertime, uh, one thing that comes to mind for me is, uh, you know, obviously being aware of wildlife because there's a sure. lot of wildlife, you know, even on a friendly little trail, <laughs> they might be three yeah. miles or even on the golf course, right? you yeah. know, you got to be aware of mama moose and calves kind of hiding around the corner. So you got to keep your head on a swivel. Sure. Uh, always trying to make a little more noise. It's mm -hmm. always helpful. You don't want to surprise a uh, mama or her moose, cow moose and their calf, or potentially even a, a bear and cubs. Right. Um, usually they move out of the way uh, when they hear you coming, especially bears. Um, so that's very good. The other thing is uh, mosquitoes. <laughs> and, and I say this in personal experience. Yeah. They, there are some areas, even on posts, where they're sure. not that bad. But when you go out in the thick woods yes. and you're around more static water in the lowlands, the mosquitoes can get to a point. I mean, if you you pretty much have to be <laughs> fully clothed, uh, probably have deep treated on your clothes sure. too, at least on exposed skin. Right. And in some cases, a mosquito net around your head. Right. Um, I have been bear baiting in, in a tent and off flats, and had I not had mosquito net on, it, it, they just go right through the deep. It seems like I have uh, a friend that says you. You haven't earned your Alaskan colors unless you snorted a mosquito through your yeah. nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, or, or eating them. Or eating them. When, when, yeah, when you're yeah. riding a bike or even running. Um, yeah, good, it's it, good protein. Yeah. People have been here for at least one summer and know exactly what we're talking about. We're really right. more talking to the, the folks that, uh, that this is their first summer. Um, okay, so is there anything else you can think of that you want to share? You know, surprisingly, uh, to really enjoy in the summertime up here, something, thing, something that people don't really think about. Um, sunglasses for oh, one because yeah. we have people don't they're going to alaska they think okay i don't need sunglasses i don't need sunscreen mm -hmm. you'll need them both here um, because we have the sunshine isn't as intense as it is in florida but we've got a lot of it we have 70 days of straight sunshine so sunglasses and sunscreen are a couple of things that will make it a little easier up here for you in the summer now Jerry, it's spot on I, I'm, I'm a sunglasses person anyways but that sunscreen mm -hmm. i've already noticed uh, walking around post, uh, people are, got the arms, and even myself, I had some, some arms uh, from being out for a couple hours hiking down by Kastner Glacier um, that's south of Fort Greeley, which is another place you can go um, and explore. So, Jerry, I really appreciate you coming here. I mean, we just barely, we could spend hours talking about this. Um, but uh, I think hopefully people will go to the website, explore Fairbanks, sure. uh, and start looking at this information because um, if you get outside, of Fort Wainwright, or even, we got a lot of stuff, good stuff on Fort Wainwright, but sure. if you get out in the community, out in this wilderness, you will realize firsthand why I personally think, and I know you agree with me, Jerry, this is the most majestic, beautiful state in the Union. So, Jerry, thanks again for Thank coming. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Me. I want to introduce uh, three videos that you're going to see after this to, to explain uh, some awesome things that we got going on. The first one is a hunter information forum. So you often hear hunter safety course. That is a requirement uh, for anyone born after 1986 uh, to hunt in the state of Alaska. However, that hunter safety course offered by Alaska Department of Fish and Game is not all inclusive of the things you need to know in order to have a successful hunt. Because of that, here at Fort Wainwright, our team and interagency folks from outside, including Alaska State Troopers and the wildlife officers, are coming together to do to do four iterations of this hunter information uh, forum. Um, there'll be one, the first one is at uh, 1400 on 9 June, then we have another one in July and two in August. One at the beginning of August prior to caribou season and one the end of August right prior to moose season. The goal of this is to do two things, prepare you to get from A to B and back to A again safely, and that's a lot harder than you think. And we kind of talked about that earlier about backcountry preparation. And the second thing is how to hunt ethically and morally and legally correctly. Uh, and if you've read the hunting regulations, it can be very daunting to understand what you're doing and where. And by going to this meeting, it helps you understand it a lot better. As a person who's hunted in Alaska, uh, it, you know, I always sit down with uh, folks at Alaska Department of Fish and Game or an actual law enforcement conservation officer to make sure what I'm reading and I see is actually what I'm reading and I see, the interpretation. So, 
Please come out and, and, and join us for that, and you'll see that video in a minute. Second video is about our better opportunity for single soldiers. And that our team is going to prevent the summer events calendar to show an unbelievable amount of cool adventures that single soldiers or geographical Baxter soldiers uh, can enjoy for free or extreme low cost. And then the third video we're going to show is about our summer concert. Friday, 10 June, um, the gates open up or the event opens up at 1600, 4 o'clock p.m. on Friday, 10 June. Um, so it allows you to get off after Arctic time, gather your family up, take some free uh, bus shuttles that we have all over the base so you're not drinking and driving, shuttle back and forth, um, and that shuttle will be running the whole time all the way through like 11 o'clock at night, 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, so it's easier for your family. Um, so without further ado, here's the videos. If you are a soldier on Fort Wainwright and like to hunt, fish, or simply get outside, then consider attending the USAG Alaska Hunter Information Forum. The forum will be offered June 9th at the Birch Hill Ski Lodge. You can ask a panel of experts questions about hunting, fishing, and the last frontier. The panel will include Alaska Department of Fish and Game Biologists, Bureau of Land Management Land Managers, Alaska Tribal Representatives, and Conservation Law Enforcement Officers from Fort Wainwright and the state. If you have any questions about being an outdoor person in Alaska or want to be informed about any changes to current regulations, these are the folks you want to talk to. To sign up for the USAG Alaska Hunter Information Forum, go to the USAG Alaska Ice Sportsman website. If you do not have an account already, you must first create an account on Ice Sportsman. Once you have an account, sign in and select Acquire Permits. In your Acquire Permits page, add any of the available Hunter Information Forum dates to your cart then check out your cart. You can confirm your registration by viewing permits in your account. The event is free. Sign up early because space is limited. Hello Fort Wainwright. I'm Staff Sergeant Latham, the U.S. Army Garrison Alaska BOSS President. The BOSS program has a lot of amazing opportunities coming up this summer to help you take full advantage of your time here in Alaska. We will be running several recreation events such as rock climbing, mountain biking, backpacking, and fishing. We'll also provide transportation to local events throughout the summer, such as the Midnight Sun Festival and the Golden Days Rodeo. Look out for our series of life skill classes, including our monthly mock promotion boards, wilderness first aid, introduction to archery, and vehicle winterization. For more information on how to sign up for these events or specific details about the date, you can stop by the boss office in Murphy Hall or call us at 907-353-7648. Hello everyone, my name is Angela, this is Rebecca. We are here today at the Chena Bend Golf Course to tell you about our upcoming summer concert. Army Entertainment and MWR are going to bring you some great entertainment, food trucks, uh, all day family fun um, here at the Chena Bend Golf Course, Friday, June 10th. So Rebecca, I was thinking about bringing my own personal vehicle to the event with my family. What's the best way to do that? Yeah, of course. So for the event this year, you don't have to stop by the visitor center and get a pass at all. Um, Badger Gate will be open just for the event. So starting at 1.30 p.m. on Friday, June 10th, Badger Gate will become special event access only. Um, so for you driving your own personal vehicle, you will enter through Badger Gate, and then we will have a parking lot area located near the airfield. Um, so you will see lots of signs, lots of volunteers um, and safety vests pointing you towards where you'll want to park your personal vehicle for the event. I don't want to bring my own vehicle, and is there another option? Is there another way for me to get me and my family to the event? Yeah, of course. Um, so if you are, or if you do have access to Fort Wainwright, um, we do have four bus shuttle pickup locations. Um, so the Physical Fitness Center PFC, the Youth Center, um, Siku Basin Neighborhood, as well as the Last Frontier Community and Activity Center, will have a continuous bus loop and shuttle loop throughout the event. Um, that loop will start at 3.30 p.m. So if you guys are wanting to be able to take the shuttle instead of driving your own personal vehicle through Badger Gate, that, those would be the four best locations to be able to pick up a free shuttle to, to the event. All right, Fairbanks and Fort Wainwright, we will see you on Friday, June 10th, starting at 4 p.m. for the 2022 Summer Concert featuring 24 Karat Golden with our special guest Hunter Hayes here at the Chena Bend Golf Course. Can't wait to see you here. 
Hey, howdy Fort Wainwright. I'm Ron Johnson. I'm the project director for North Haven Communities. And there's a couple things that I'd like to share with you as we move into summer. First is National Night Out. That's a big blowout of summer event that we have here. North Haven Communities sponsors it and it's in partnership with uh, the Fort Wainwright Garrison. Normally this, this event would attract seven to 800 residents that we'd have attend prior to COVID. So this will be our first blowout year that we've had since. So come on out and uh, we'll have the Department of Emergency Services will be here. They'll have police and fire static displays. They'll have demonstrations. Uh, McGruff the Crime Dog, Sparky, all those folks will be here. We'll have a whole bunch of free stuff going on. There'll be gunny sack races for the kids, popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, balloon artists, all the stuff that you'd expect for a summer blowout we'll have going on right here. It's a great event, 26 July. Come on out and really enjoy the summer with us. The other thing I'd like to talk about is our resident advisory board. And this is a quality of life initiative that we started in 2019. And the, the focus of that is to find a way to build better relationship and better communication between North Haven community staff and leadership and our Fort Wainwright Garrison um, leadership and staff. So basically what we do is each one of our neighborhoods would have a resident advisory board member that would represent their neighborhood. And they would share the neighborhood's uh, concerns concerns, questions, or, or any other information that they would like to have. Um, they basically bring that to the meetings that we have once a month, and we have them right here at the community center. We'll do both virtual and in-person hybrid so that it's as flexible as we can be for the RAB members. And they'll represent those concerns to us, um, the leadership from the project in Garrison, and uh, we'll find solutions uh, to those and then we'll share that information back. The other thing we do is it's a great way for the Garrison organization and the project to get information out to all the residents. So it's a, it's a great flow of communication and it's really focused on those issues that you're concerned about. So if you'd like to serve, um, we're losing a couple board members to PCS this summer and we have some neighborhoods that, that aren't represented. So we'd like to, if you're interested in serving, we'd like to have you come and apply to be a, a RAB member. You can do that by going to our website at uh, nhcalaska.com and look under resident and resident advisory board and you'll get an application and we'd love to have you on the team. It's just another way to make your stay here at Fort Wainwright and North Haven communities better. Thank you very much and have a great summer. All right, Fort Wainwright, um, I wanna thank you all for again, taking the time to watch this video, to get information about what's going on in the Fairbanks and Fort Wainwright area. A lot of wonderful things happening this summer. Uh, again, I want to apologize um, for the, the construction that's going on, both on and off post. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear there's two seasons in Alaska, winter and construction, but it's about having a positive attitude, knowing what's going on and having a plan, and you'll get used to the new routes um, like you do anywhere in the country. Um, enjoy this sunshine, enjoy this wonderful time of year, the 70 days of, of light, as we say, it is in full swing right now. Um, get out of the house and enjoy this place. Um, I kind of, we have a rule in our house, we don't even turn the TVs on until about an hour before we go to bed uh, to enjoy the summer. Um, our next Arctic Vibe will be on or about 30 June at a place Department of Public Works is gonna pick uh, something outdoors, we don't know where yet, um, and we'll announce that later uh, so that if you want to attend in person, you could. Again, as always, if you have comments uh, uh, um, on how we can improve this or information you'd like to see at the next one, please put it in the Facebook uh, comment area and our team will gather that and incorporate that in the next Arctic Vibe. Have a wonderful Alaska, last frontier summer and be safe out there. Take care.